Hello and welcome to hear about 4D barn way of designing robotic barns. My name is Virpi Kurkela and I am 4D barns veterinary specialist. First I would like to introduce you our design team. We have Jouni Pitkaranta, he's an architect. Mario Posio and Virpi Huotari are Master of Sciences in Agriculture and I am a veterinarian, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. We together cover all the different aspects of robotic barn design like cow welfare and health management and building a barn. We in a 4D barn think that the barn is a tool. It's a tool for making mil milk. It is very complicated tool and it's also very expensive tool, but anyhow it is a tool. And when you are getting yourself a tool, it is very important to think about the work you are going to do with it. That's why when we are creating a new barn or remodeling an existing one, our work also starts from the work it's done in a barn. Other important cornerstone on, of our functional design is the cow welfare and health. We want to create a good working place for both people and cows. We also think that the farm or the barn should, should fit the farmer's goals, way of working and management style. Why do we know so much about robotic milking? It's because we have visited and recorded labor times in over 50 robotic barns in North Europe, in North America and Europe. And what we have seen is that just kind of putting a robot, um, robotic milking machine or automatic milking unit into a, into a barn, it doesn't make it labor efficient, not at all. It doesn't give you the production level that you have set your goals into or doesn't create the cow welfare and milk flow you have planned. So we don't think uh, the labor efficiency is made or, or good milk flow is made made with the automatic milk, milking unit itself but there has to be a good barn design and good management around the the milking machine. This is data from our 50 free uh, survey farms. So these blue dots are all different farms. This is the labor efficiency in mil milk liters or, or pounds per labor hour. The least efficient ones are here and they get uh, less than 200 liters or 500 pounds milk per labor hour. And the most efficient are, efficient are here, they get more than 900 liters or 2000 pounds per labor hour. When you look at the different size farms, you can see that one robot farm or one robot unit cannot be that efficient. But when you get bigger from there, the efficiency gets much better. And of course, the bigger you are, the more efficient you get. But the good news, especially for family size farm, is that these units with uh, two to four milking robots can be really efficient and uh, get good results. Uh, if you look at example uh, 240 cow herd uh, and, and the time they use for the daily tasks with, with animals, uh, we can compare them. Uh, we have here one farm with quite good efficiency, uh, 3.5 minutes per cow, uh, which makes 14 labor, labor hours per day. And then we have another farm, which is not one of the worst ones, but still labor efficiency is not that good. They use six minutes per cow meaning 24 lab labor hours per, per day. Difference is 10 hours and and that is if we use uh, labor cost of 15 
euros per hour. That means um, one. Uh, that means fifty-five thousand euros a year. Uh, if you look at the lifespan of, of a farm, that is eight hundred. I mean, fifteen years, which is would, would be when you are thinking about investment. Uh, you should look maybe that much uh, ahead. That difference in fifteen years makes eight hundred twenty thousand euros. And same thing in dollars, uh, if we use $14 per labor hour, it is in 15 years, it's $766,000. Uh, so time, these minutes, they really matter and they can make a lot, a lot of expenses or help you to help you to gain money. So this is the design path or process that we uh, go through together with the farm. During these four to five months, we together create a good tool to produce milk for him or her. We start with implement plan. Uh, that means that we go to a farm and uh, we spend a day or two together thinking about the processes, the working routines in the barn. So how do, how do we want to use that tool? We talk about big things like manure removal or feeding or bedding, things like that. But we also think about the, and talk about the very small, small tasks, which actually are not so more small. They can be really time consuming if you don't plan them well. For example, calving. Uh, we talk about when the, how long time the cow spends in a calving pen, when does it arrive there, uh, when does it leave, uh, uh, when you need, if you need to assist the calving, where do you take the cow for that, uh, where is all the equipment needed for that, what happens with the calf when it's born, uh, where does it get its its colostrum, where is the cow milked for the first time, all these small things that makes a huge difference if, if it's difference if it's uh, uh, efficient and well planned or if it's not and everything you have to walk a lot and and work a lot to get things done. Next phase is robot area preliminary plan. That's where we find the optimal robot area to fit the goals set by a farm. Uh, there are many ways that robot can be placed in a, in a barn, not just one or two ways, but there are so many different ways. When we have been in farms, we have seen that this robot area is kind of a heart of the whole barn. This is where most of the, the work is done in this area. And, uh, and if this work is done fluently, if this, uh, if this heart works well, then the whole barn works well. Next phase is total barn preliminary plan. And this is the normal layout like we often see in when, when designing barns. Uh, so we don't stop here, but we continue with work simulations. And that is really, really unique thing for 4D barn. So we take maybe 15, 12, 15, maybe 20 main works in a barn and we simulate them with drawings. We kind of put the works on top of the or inside the layout. For example, here you can see how a cow is taken in and out of the hanging, handling chute, how you can take it from which route to take it from the special needs pen, which route to use when you take it to be examined from the carving pen and from the VIC group. This visa, VIC group is a very important cow group, actually a fresh cow pen, or also from the main group, and how you can get or where the cow can go and which routes out from the handling sheet. 
The last phase of our design process is the gate plan. Uh, we identify all the gates used uh, in a barn. The gate plan looks a bit complicated and, and the, it is true that we need a lot of gates, but all these gates have meaning. Actually the meaning comes from the first day the preliminary, preliminary sorry, the implement plan. Because uh, that's where we have defined the jobs that has to be done in, in the barn. And these gates make it possible. Uh, with these gates, whoever is working in a, in a barn with the cows can do it efficiently. We plan the gating so that one person can do the everyday tasks alone. Uh, working has to be safe for the person doing it and also uh, uh, stressless, uh, stress free, sorry, for the cow. So, this is how we in 4D Barn do barn functional design together with farmers. I'm really glad that you took the time to go this through with me. Please check our websites 4dbarn.com. There you will find more information about us. So thank you very much and hope to see you soon.